Charlie follow the everybody it's your girl Jay and today I'm here with my January wrap-up for 2021 I read a total of 15 books this month which is crazy to me because school has been kicking my butt but I haven't had to work because we're currently in lockdown but that being said I'm going to be splitting my wrap-up into three different parts five books each part so this is part one with the first five books that I read for January 2020 so without further ado let us get started so the first three books that I'm going to talk about are all part of the same series they are the Heartstopper graphic novels by Alice Osman I have been meaning to read these for so long they finally became available in my library so I took that chance to gobble them up and I am obsessed with them. I gave volume one and two four stars and the third volume five stars. I think they are the cutest things in the entire world. If you live under a rock and don't know what Heartstopper is about. It follows a boy named Charlie Springs who is an openly gay boy in year 10 at an all-boys school. He meets a year 11 boy named Nick and they become instant friends. Charlie falls for Nick pretty quickly but he understands that he will never feel the same way about him until he does and it's like the story of their relationship and like I said it is the cutest freaking thing in the entire world. I love both of the main characters. I think that Charlie is a great main character. He seems to be super sure of himself and very self-confident but you also get to see the other side of him where he isn't that way and he kind of self-doubts a lot which I thought was really cool to be able to see that side. And then Nick is like the epitome of a golden retriever stuck in a human's body. He was just so supportive of Charlie in like literally everything and I loved that he also had like a side plot about trying to figure out who he was and figure out his sexuality and all of that in a very normalized way. And then in the second volume there's even more self-discovery happening in the sense of Nick and we also get introduced to some new characters who I absolutely adore. I think that volume two definitely dives into some more deeper topics such as like homophobia and the fear of being outed. I think that a lot of people will be able to relate to Nick's story and being scared of how your friends are going to react. I was also a huge fan of the final scene in this where Nick is talking to his mom. I cried a little bit. It was very heartwarming. And then volume three was my favorite that I've read so far, evident in the five star rating. This one takes Nick and Charlie on their year end trip to France and it's like their adventures there. We also follow some side stories with the side characters and it's just really good. This one also covers some deeper topics in the sense of eating disorders and self-harm but I think it's done in a very good way. I just think that this is such a great diverse graphic novel. There are so many sexualities and different identities in this book that are just so normalized. I really love seeing it. So if you have not, which I am sure everybody on booktube has read these graphic novels, I highly highly recommend them because they are so great. So the next book I read was Shine. This is by Jessica Jung and I gave this three out of five stars. It follows Rachel who has always dreamed of being the next K-pop star since she was 11 years old. She is now 17 and she is a trainee on the verge of debuting for DB Entertainment, the lead recruiters for K-pop idols in South Korea. So when the opportunity to sing a duet with Jason Lee, the dream boy of the k-pop industry arises she needs to decide what she's willing to give up in order to chase her dreams and it's like the story of that although this book was a very easy and fast read i got through it very quickly i found it to be very average and i don't know if that is just because i am not, personally not a big k-pop fan and don't really understand the hype surrounding this industry or if it really was just an average read i just honestly didn't really care for either rachel or Jason or what happened to them. I did feel for Rachel in the sense that Jason's an idiot and was unable to see the sexism in the industry when it comes to girls versus boys and everything that the girls had to deal with on a daily basis. I also just really hated the girl on girl hate that was so rampant in this book. Literally every other scene was just girls hating on other girls and I understand that that's like part of the competitive scene of the industry but it was just like come on can like literally nobody be supportive at all of each other it was just 
not my cup of tea. I did end up bumping the star rating up half a star. I was originally going to give it a 2.5 out of 5, but it honestly felt like a thinly veiled memoir for Jessica. She is one of the group members of like a super big K-pop group. She's the former lead singer of Korea's most famous girl group, Girls' Generation. So it just kind of felt like she was kind of writing her own story, but like putting it into this book instead so she couldn't get in trouble, you know what I mean? So I kind of just felt really bad for her and bumped it up to a three because like, oof, if that's what you go through in this industry, I don't know why people go through it. I get it, like fame and money and, you know, adoration, but mm -mm. I would not. And then the final book that I'm going to talk about for part one of this wrap-up is Glass Sword by Victoria Aveyard. This is the second installment in the Red Queen series and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It basically picks up right where Red Queen leaves off where Mare and her crew are searching the world for more new bloods who are like her which means that you have both red and silver blood and it's like the story of them searching for these people. This definitely was not as good as the first book in my opinion. I still think it was an enjoyable book but definitely not as exciting or thrilling as I found the first one. I think that the first half of the book was very slow and that's why I didn't really warn to the story as much. It did become a lot more fast-paced in the second half and I did enjoy the second half a lot more than the first half. I also was not the biggest fan of Mare in this one. Her whole character kind of flipped from what we saw in the Red Queen to something completely different and she was just very like full of herself and entitled and I just wasn't here for it. I really liked learning more about the new bloods I found them very interesting and I just wanted to know more about all the powers that they were able to possess because everybody is different and has different powers. There were a few deaths that I did not expect in this book which some of them I am very angry about but some of them I'm very delighted by so it was a nice mixture of death you know but I personally am a big fan of Maven which you know I usually like the villains in the story so it isn't really that big of a surprise but I just really wish that there was more of a focus on him and his story in this book rather than Mare but that's just because I didn't really care about her in this one. This book definitely leaves us on a cliffhanger so I am very intrigued on picking up King's Cage pretty soon hopefully. I'm just waiting for the audiobook in my overdrive right now. I am hoping that the third book you know ramps back up to Red Queen status in my mind but this was still a lot of fun so 3.5 out of 5 stars. Alright everybody so that was part one of my January wrap up for 2021. Part two and three will be up in the next couple of days so check those out if you're interested. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or what you thought of them and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!